Hello and welcome back to Mostendorf here um, with all things Joan Sutherland. Um, it's been quite a while since I've done a video. Um, I just haven't been inspired lately. Um, but um, tonight, uh, I finally, with Joan Sutherland being my favorite, um, am getting around to doing a little bit of Chia de la Mamour. Um, big surprise, right? You know, she made a big splash on February 17th, 1959, and then she was a international star the next day. Um, oh, and if you're watching me for the first time, hi, Tim Ostendorf, uh, baritone and innkeeper at the inatcrystallake.com. Um, well, not, well, that's the website, actually, you know, well, anyway. Um, and, uh, and Joan Sutherland is my favorite soprano. And so tonight, um, and actually in honor of Lucia, I have a lovely blood red glass with a tasty, tasty treat. Even though we're not doing the mad scene, we're going to do our first um, first act aria. But not only is the glass red, so is the cocktail. It's a little ruby red grapefruit vodka, a little uh, grapefruit um, liqueur, and I think it's called Hypnotique, and uh, and then a little red raspberry uh, liqueur from the Flag Hill Winery place somewhere here in New Hampshire. <laughs> and so. I played uh, a cut from this CD before. It's a gala CD of all live performances. And we're going to hear the first actor aria, Regnava nel silencio. Um, and it's a little misleading because on here it says uh, that it also includes the recitative Ancor non giunse, which it does not. Um, and it also does not include the 28 bar harp solo, thank goodness. Um, actually, it's a very lovely solo. It just goes on for a little too long. And what do you do? What is the soprano to do for 28 measures of wandering around the stage on a darkened, uh, darkened stage? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, but, uh, let me read. The translation is very funny. It's very, very 18, uh, uh, 1800s. Um, the recitative, which we'll not hear, um, uh, on Coronon June, say, hath he, f hath, hath he forgot me? Imprudent, he, her, little helper, or assistant, or friend Alice. Sometimes she's displayed as like a confidant, and sometimes it's like she's a maid. Um, so I've seen her played as like an old craggy, you know, wench practically. Um, but anyway, so Alice says, Alice, uh, imprudent to ask him hither. Think of thy brother. What if he should discover thou lovest his foe? And Lucy says, Lucia says, I'd warn him. I've called him hither, that I may tell him what danger lurks around him. Alice says, Ah, wherefore roam thy glances wild and affrighted? Lucia, tis the fountain. I tremble whenever I behold it. Uh, quella fonte. Uh, ah, tu lo sai, knowst thou the legend? Upon this spot they, so, so they, so, they say so. I can't even read it. It doesn't even flow correctly. Upon this spot they say so, that our ravens would slew the maid that loved him, in a jealous madness. The helpless maid rests in its waters, its tide closed over her forever. Her wraith once stood before me. Her wraith, that's a Scottish word for, like, ghost or, um, you know, ghost or, um, uh, you know, ghost. Um, what sayst thou, Alice says, and then Lucy says, I'll tell thee, Ascolta, listen. And then we do the aria. Um, Reniava nel silencio. In the state all lay, s in silence all lay slumbering. Dark was the night and o'er clouded, and o'er clouded. Uh, no star was gleaming. Uh, the pallid moon in veils of storm was shrouded. When on the air a sigh was born, and then a sorrowing wail, I saw her on the margin of the tide, uh, by the edge of the water, on the margin of the tide. Ecco sul quel margine. Uh, there stood a shadow. Ah. She moved her lips as if to speak, but I, alas, could not hear her. Then, as in warning, she waved her hand. I did not dare draw near her, and while I watched her motionless, she vanished from my sight, and o'er the streamlet's silver tide shone forth a lurid light. Da -da -da -da, blah, 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 blah. Um, Alice has this long bit um, kind of in the middle, getting ready for the, the fast uh, uh, color tour part, um, the cabaletta sort of thing. Um, and she says, um, presage, presage, however you want to pronounce it, if you want to be all Frenchified, uh, presage of sorrow that vision foreboded, thus do I fear thy future is clouded. Dearest Lucy, I pray thee, forgo thy fatal love. 
Forgo thy fatal love, ere grief o'erwhelm thee. And Lu Lucia says, Ah, grief dissolveth beneath, beneath his glances. Life is rapture. Life is rapture. And then we go into the rapture. Quando rapito in estasi. Uh, where he but here, were he but here, O oh, ecstasy, not should I know of his of sorrow. Bring me a happy morrow, O oh, love, to thee I pray, to thee I pray. On ecstasy, not should I know of sorrow. And happy, 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 some high notes, and uh, uh, there's a cut near the end. It's it's a long enough aria, why not just leave in those couple extra bars? But we'll talk about it when we get to it. Enough talking. On to the music. Here we go. Oh, and you'll notice I shaved and I just got a haircut today. Oh, so uh, she made her big splash. Uh, she'd been singing for years and uh, back in Australia, and then she moved to London, she studied there, and then she made a big splash in Covent Garden on uh, February 17th, 1959. This recording was done just nine days later on February 26th. So it's very exciting to, to hear her so fresh after her big, her big splash. <laughs> Did you hear her? The, the voice trembles. It's just so exciting. And I love these early recordings where it's not it, it perfect in its imperfection. There's this little tremble in the voice where she echo su quel margine. Um, well, let's see if we can hear it. Oh, I hate when I do that. I pressed the wrong button, I think. I'll get back to it. And even that ah, there's a there's a little tremble to the voice. I don't know if she did it on purpose or if it just she was you know it, she wasn't uh, hadn't achieved Joan Sutherland yet, where everything was kind of flattened out and perfect. Um.
and di sangue rosa jo. Uh, uh, just love those words and uh, sangue blood, obviously. Um, and we'll get more sangue when we do the mad scene another time. But that is really long, especially since I like to talk so much. Uh, anyway. Those trails. So this is uh, Alice, Alice, um, Margreta Elkins, who sang actually with Joan Sutherland quite a lot. Um, and this is a little transition um, where, you know, uh, it's, oh, we're going to get to the fast section. And uh, she's saying, oh, you know, this is terrible. Uh, you should be careful. And, and then uh, it's almost like a little mini mad scene. Like, uh, you know, she's just, you know, she doesn't care that her brother is, is going to, you know, is forcing her to marry somebody else and all that other stuff. Um, by the way, and the conductor is Atulio Serafim. Um, who was quite elderly by that point, but he uh, very famously, uh, well, he was a very famous conductor and also uh, co uh, conducted uh, Maria Callas a lot, blah, blah, blah. Um, okay. <laughs> steps. It's quite uh, um, revolutionary. Um, I'm, I, not that he was the one who invented it, Donatetti, but um, just it's it's a uh, it's a little uh, not disconcerting because um, I've heard it so many times. But it's an interesting little effect. Like maybe she's starting to go crazy already. <laughs> Thank you. 
So there's a cut, and I, I, you know, once you hear it, and I, uh, I, I'll play some version of, of someone singing it at some point. Um, but um, it, there, it just goes too quickly to the end, and then she sings a high note, and then it's over. But there's this, this wonderful. Uh, and then she does that again. Um, and it's just this great little transition um, back to the ending. So I don't know why they cut it. It's, I don't know, maybe it's 50, I didn't count it out to 15, not even 15 measures, maybe. I don't know. It's not very long. I don't know why they cut it, and in most performances, I don't know if they still do, but back then, in 1959, they certainly did. And on most of the recordings I have, because uh, we're going to hear Beverly Sills next, uh, even on her studio version of that aria, um, they cut it. And uh, But on both their uh, complete... I haven't listened to her uh, Joan's earlier version in a while, but I'm pretty sure in uh, Joan's first complete Lucia and her later one with Pavarotti and Richard Bonin conducting. Um, I know that one I just recently listened to and she does sing that cut version that I just talked about um, and Sills does it in her version, uh, her the complete recording. But anyway, uh, enough about Joan Sutherland because we're going to get on to Beverly Sills. So um, Tim Hustendorf signing off till the next time um, and um, I hope you're glad to have me back. Oop, wrong clicker. Mm-hmm.